What's up? We are back again for Do That But Better. I'm Zach. I'm Eric. And today we are talking about something that's on everyone's mind for summer. Cutting. How do I cut weight? How do I cut body fat? How do I get shredded? How do I get shredded? <laughs> and yeah, so it, it, it's summer. Everyone wants to take off their shirt. It's getting hot. And I don't know about, about you, Eric. Uh, man, it's, it's humid. Like people are walking into the gym just wet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we are not very humid compared to the Midwest, but it's been humid for Colorado. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, everyone, I, I only put a shirt on today just for this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you guys are watching live, uh, say hi. Uh, if you guys got any comments or questions or anything, let us know and maybe we can answer them. Um, but Eric, uh, when it comes to cutting, I think that there's lots of preconceived notions on what you need to do. And this is, this is your jam. So... Uh, Nutrition is your thing. So l let's talk about it. W where do we start first? Well, so I feel like when we talk about cutting, usually up, the idea... What? I said, what's up, Raul? Oh. <laughs> uh, when you're talking about cutting, it is like... The idea is you've got a little bit of fat left that you want to lose versus like, okay, we're losing fat or losing weight. Right. But really, they're the same thing. Like, it's the same concepts. Um, but it might get more specific, right? Or like more detailed when you're trying to lose those last like five or 10 pounds. Um, so I, I don't know. It's a weird thing because you're really just talking about losing fat. <laughs> right. right. Um, well, and I, I think that's one huge misconception. So people say that they want to lose weight. And lots of times, nobody cares about what, uh, what weight is on the scale, the number on the scale, if they have the body composition that they want, if they feel uh, confident in their clothes. If, so unless you're in a, a weight-specific um, competition, then really no, nobody really cares. Yeah, exactly. And so, so, so no matter what, when we're talking about losing weight or, um, or cutting, we're, we're usually talking about losing body fat because, you know, when it, when it comes to losing weight, nobody wants to be, uh, at a certain weight and, uh, incapable of doing activities. Right. Yeah, <laughs> right. Don't be, so you, we still want to be strong. Right. With no muscle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we got to like clarify terms there a little bit mm -hmm. that like we're trying to lose fat, maintain muscle, right? Be healthy. Yeah. And I mean, this goes right back to uh, CrossFit, the, their fitness in a, in a hundred words. And um, it's, you know, eat meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, little starch, no sugar. But then the, the portion that is so important is uh, keep intake to levels that support exercise and not body fat. And yeah. this can be any type of exercise. It doesn't matter if it's, I'm walking my kids to the bus stop. It's like, all right, I need, I need enough fuel. So I'm, I'm not waking up, um, with no energy or I'm not feeling motivated. I'm, I'm feeling good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then the question is, how do you do that? There you go. Which I think typically uh, the go-to is I'm going to hop on the treadmill. I'm going to do an <laughs> hour on the treadmill because that thing says that I burned this many calories, uh, which is interesting. I just saw someone posting about this, that, uh, the estimates on your like treadmill or the bike or your watch or whatever, that those estimates include your, uh, basal metabolic rate. Really? So, which, is, which is your the calories you're burning when you're just sitting still doing nothing, right? Like the calories needed to be alive. Okay. So, so if, if you were doing nothing, it's it's counting part of uh, part of what that is. Right. Okay. So, like if you were to sit still for an hour and you would burn hypothetically like 200 calories just sitting still, mm 
mm-hmm. and you spent an hour just like hanging out on the bike for a while and it says you burned 700 calories you burned 200 calories with your basal metabolic rate and then an additional 500 on top of that interesting which yeah i was like oh that that makes sense i don't know why i would never think about that but right. uh yeah that's wild yeah so then, well, you know and actually just just the fact that um that they can do that it it seems like I mean, so any anytime that you have like calorie counters, um, you know, when you go from machine to machine or or uh, like apparatus or whatever, it seems like they're so different. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And so now, when you start throwing into stuff like that, or even just the fact that you know somebody will be wearing a Fitbit and they they do a, a ten minute workout and it was high intensity and all and they're like I burned eight hundred calories and it's like come on man <laughs> no you didn't <laughs> or what they say is I'm going to go eat eight hundred calories <laughs> yeah absolutely and you, well you, you know what's funny is lots of times you you might look at that um, for your workout but and then you might even say hey I'm gonna like now I can have this many calories but we might not be uh, measuring how many calories we're eating the rest of the day. Right. You know, you're like, oh, well, I just had this meal. And so now I'm just breaking even. And you have no clue what you did the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah. So really all of that stuff, like I think trying to balance the calories burned in your workout with the mm-hmm. calories that you're eating is, I don't know that that has ever worked for anyone. Yeah. Like just have, the calories you're eating and go with that or have your macros you're eating go with that versus like well i worked out this much so now i can eat this much right like, especially because when you calculate your calories or your macros you're you're already including your activity level right there's a multiplier in there that estimates how much activity you have each day right and so your activity is already accounted for so doing extra exercise, whatever, like that, that doesn't work. Yeah. And <laughs> that's not, and th- this always goes to, uh, you know, it, it, it's almost like, you know, when people talk about medicine and they're like, Oh, you're, you're taking this pill, but you didn't solve the root problem. And the root problem is not that you didn't exercise enough. It, it was again, that you were eating to levels <laughs> that were supporting body fat and not just exercise. So yeah. it's like, hey, what if I what if I take a step back and eat the things that I need, and um, and only what I need, have enough, and I will probably be losing body fat um, and looking leaner and whatever you want, performing yeah. better. Yeah, and I can. Well, so here I was going to talk about this later. I'll just go into it. So uh, the last about month, I've been doing my own cut. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't know, we had a trip for like a week and a half to Florida with in-laws where, you know, there was a bunch of desserts and different food than we'd normally have. Um, not as much as activity. Um, there were a couple other things in there where I didn't have workouts as much as I, as often as I normally do. So I came off this like two or three weeks and I was like, man, I am definitely looking and feeling extra padded (laughs) than (laughs) usual. And I was like, okay, I've got one month till the baby's due. I'm going to do a cut and I, I'm doing it very simply, right? I'm not, I'm not even like weighing or measuring. I'm not weighing myself. I'm going off of the way that I look. And, uh, the, the steps that I gave myself was, um, I'm going to go on a walk every day. Mm-hmm. and run on my non-lifting days. I'll go for a jog. So a walk and a jog on those days. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to um, replace some of the starchy foods, starchy carbs that I normally eat with uh, like raw vegetables. Um, and I'm not eating anything after we put the girls to bed. Yeah. So essentially what I did was I was like, okay, where are, where am I having issues? Like you said, the root problem. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I was not being active enough. 
my schedule had changed. I was not getting out and getting active um, as much as I had been. And I was eating more starchy foods and I was like snacking later in the evening. So, okay, how do I address those things? <laughs> I wake up early, go for a walk. I replace the potatoes or rice that I've been eating with um, like lettuce, onions, peppers, whatever, all the veggies we have. And I just cut myself off like no snacking after after dinner. And after I think it's been about three weeks, mm -hmm. noticeable change. Really? Like very simple, right? And I totally could weigh and measure stuff. But again, like that root problem of like the behaviors I was doing were leading to the result I was getting. <clears throat> yeah. So I had to like get back to the behaviors that that I wanted to see and they got my body back to where I wanted it to be. Right. Now what uh what kind of things would would you fault to when it was uh snacking? Especially you said in the evening? Yeah. Well, and especially with a pregnant wife. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Blame it on her. It was her <laughs> fault. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, Cheerios, which just like growing up, cereal is not usually like a breakfast thing. It's like a snack thing. So uh, a bowl of Cheerios at night or um, if we have whatever ice cream, just like a bowl of ice cream. Mm -hmm. That's it. But I mean, that's plenty when you're talking about losing or gaining weight, like that's your 250 calories over or under <laughs> it right. difference. Now, actually, let's talk about that. So we, we, we talked a little bit about the, about habits. So, you know, just changing your habits and finding the habits of the person that you want to be. So, uh, at the body composition that you want to be and, you know, eat meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, little starch, no sugar keep levels to <laughs> intake, right? Let's, let's just repeat it again. Um, but um, now if it, if it does come to measuring food, all right, where do we start? So um, there are a few different ways. The most basic way you can find a, the formulas online to where essentially you plug in your age, your height, your weight, um, your activity level, your estimated activity level and um, enter all that in into the formula and you'll get your calories right. and so then uh, you can take those calories and you break them down into your macros typically right so your protein carbs fat so how many calories am I getting from each one um, and then you'll you're able to tell like how many grams or ounces of everything um, of each protein carb fat you need to eat in order to hit your goal Right. Right. And you know, you can space that out and decide like, okay, I want to lose this many pounds or cut this much fat in this length of time. And so then from there you can space it out even more and say like, okay, each week I need to like stay under this number so that after 10 weeks I hit my goal or whatever. Right. And That's actually, what, one of the things that you that you mentioned, and, and I want to go back to, is you were saying uh, the 250 calories, and mm -hmm. th this is a um, th this is a starting point for decreasing body fat. So if say say that we have 2,000 calories as our uh, as our maintenance, this will keep you right at exactly what you are. All right, and so this is not for everybody, but um, this is a good place to to start. And now if I decrease my calories by 250 uh, per day, then I'm losing about one pound per week, which is very sustainable. You aren't gnawing your arm off because you're starving because you, you cut by a thousand calories. And, um, and now you're changing small habits, just like uh, you were saying, that, um, so, so that it's something that you can do for long term. Yeah. Yeah, and so, really you're moving toward a a sustainable lifestyle mm -hmm. cool all right and so all right so we got carbs or uh, i'm sorry uh we've got our uh our calories so we and th this is huge when when people are finding their calories now you actually have to measure <laughs> and so lots, lots of times people say hey I'm, I'm gonna eat less it's like well how much were you eating i don't know right 
And no. well, I'm just gonna have smaller portions. What are you talking about? What portions of what? Yeah. And like, if if you're not actually measuring this, then uh, you're, you're really just shooting in the dark. And I promise that you won't get there because you're gonna get hungry, and you're gonna go back to the same habits that you had. Yeah. So so in what's that? You go back to your default. Yeah. And even when you think like, I mean, who hasn't said? Man, I'm working really hard. I tried really hard. I it just didn't work. Right. Like, because in your head you're telling yourself, "I'm working hard at this." But if yep. you aren't gathering data, <laughs> then who knows? Yeah. And you know what? Uh, and then when we're tracking, it's like, how often are you tracking? Is it like I did really good three days, or I did it Monday through Friday? And, because on the weekends you can totally go off the walls. And oh, yeah. even if you were, you were really good all, all week. And now I'm not saying that you, um, like you have to like, <laughs> that you can't go out and have fun, but it's going to take some planning and, right. uh, we, we need to make sure that we're, we're doing something at least for a couple of weeks, like very consistently to actually even just get to our base. And I think that this is one thing that's huge when, when you start counting calories or counting macros and um, and anything in that realm, that uh, we're looking for something right away. But if you weren't tracking before, then it's going to take a week or two just to get good at tracking your food well. So don't don't assume that you're going to lose weight right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, and you know all of these formulas, they're estimates. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, get your numbers and you take that 250 calories off and you do it for a week or two weeks and you haven't seen any progress. Yeah. Either one, you aren't tracking, uh, correctly or two, maybe you need to adjust it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and know, so, like, yeah. So even, even though my fitness pal told you that this is your calories, well, guess what? Uh, now if you've been doing it consistently and you're hitting those numbers for real, and I'm not talking about. Hey, uh, I was 50 under my uh, carbs and protein, and I was 25 over my uh, the 25 grams over my fat. It's like, yes, you were tracking, <laughs> but but uh, and it's good that you're being honest. But we we need to start hitting what what we actually uh, want to get. Yeah. Cool. So um, all right, we're tracking, and now when it comes to protein. All right, so there, there's lots of uh, ways that you can do this, but um, where do we want to start when it comes to our, actually even just setting up our macros? Yeah, well, in, of course now, like there's so many different diets mm -hmm. <laughs> and plans, you know, like some are high carb, low fat, some are low fat, what? high fat, low carb. Yeah. Um, so you can adjust that depending on what you're doing. Um, typically most people are balanced. So, uh, what is it like two grams of protein or what is it? Yeah. Per pound kilo, something like that. Well, kilo. Yeah. So yeah, I, I like to think like 0. 0.8 to one gram per pound of body weight just cause I, I don't like to do kilos. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if, if you're, if you're looking at, uh, about a, about a pound per per body weight or just under. So if you're, uh, let's say you're uh, 190 pounds, right? Then you're probably going to get somewhere in the 150 to 100. Uh, what did, what number did I just say? 190. Like yeah. yeah. So, so somewhere between like 150 190, you're going to be pretty darn good. You're going to be supporting muscle growth. Um, you're going to be supporting performance uh, if you're exercising and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and really so. Um, the majority of the time when I am working with clients. So a lot of people do use like my fitness pal or whatever, mm -hmm. um, to dial in those things. I like to use the hand measurements. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I can use, I have like a calculator that I use that converts it. It gives you your macros and your calories and converts it to hand measurements. Um, so if you, aren't carrying a scale with you everywhere. Um, like I've done this for putting on muscle too. Like last year mm. I put in my notes on my phone, I break it down. So like I'll have my protein and say like seven servings of protein 
and one serving is a palm sized piece of protein. And right. so then throughout the day, as I eat, I can look at my hand and be like, that's a serving of protein and put a tally in my notes. And here's a serving of carbs and fat. And I can keep tallies that way mm -hmm. versus the specific grams and ounces and of everything. Right. I find that's easier for me and uh, for most people, especially like we said, like if you don't have experience weighing and measuring all your food, I think it's worthwhile to do at some point uh, to get a really good idea of serving sizes. Uh, but for more long term cutting and losing weight, I've found that that is really helpful and sustainable. Right. And uh, now if you're doing hand methods, how many do you usually end up having a day for a protein? Um, let's see. I haven't used them. So last year I was putting on weight. Yeah. And I think I was about six to seven servings of protein a day. Yeah. And, and then it was like, for it was actually fat was the big one. Like that was the hardest thing to get enough of because that's where you're like, you get a lot of calories when yeah. you're trying to gain weight. Yeah. It was like 12 servings of fat. <laughs> right. And well, so now, uh, well, just back to protein. Cause I think that this is huge for most people. Like, you know, <laughs> just talking to somebody uh, recently and they're like, I'm eating pretty high protein and I had a chicken wing and, uh, and like a chicken strip. And I'm like, Oh man, that's, that's not even close. And, no. Uh, so, uh, the amount of, of protein that you're going to be eating is, is a lot more than people think. And I think that people are very scared of it because they feel like they're, they're eating too much. And the funny thing is that, um, when they don't eat the protein, they start eating the healthy things and they, they grab a granola bar and yogurt and bananas, <laughs> whatever it is, which are actually, um, especially the processed things. So your granola bars and uh, actually just anything in a package, it's going to be very high calorically. And so even though it's a small volume of food, it is, uh, it's high calorically and then you're, you're wanting more. Oh, Whereas oh. if you're eating, if you're eating a uh, big old chicken breast or some, uh, some lean pork or uh, lean beef, you're, you're going to be full. And uh, so especially when you're, when you're trying to lose weight, being full is like that is like a blessing yeah <laughs> because you're because you're you're supposed to be in a calorie deficit so if we can get the highest volume of food with the lowest calories then uh we're, it's a win-win totally yeah that's why if you if, if you focus on getting enough protein and enough and a pile of vegetables the other stuff like there isn't even room Right. For, for those like dense starchy carbs. Um, yep. What was I about to say? Oh, protein. Uh, even like protein shakes. Yeah. We think uh, Lisa got some like collagen protein recently. Yeah. And it said one serving was one scoop and it was nine grams of protein. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. No. That, yeah. That is, uh, that is like having like one ounce of meat. Yeah. Like, uh, very close to it. It's absolutely nothing. Yeah. So then, yeah. you know, if people are thinking like, Oh, I took my protein shake. But if you look at the label and it's like one serving is nine grams, like you need to take two or three scoops of that. <laughs> right. To considering this like a meal replacement. Yeah. Actually, uh, speaking of that, I, I just, I was talking to somebody and they're like, cause, uh, I was, we were talking to them about getting their protein and they're like, well, what if I do like a meal replacement instead? And it's like, well, are you replacing a meal? And like, and if not, what are you replacing? Or are you just adding more crap to, uh, to your diet? Right. And, and, and really just more calories. What's that? Is this what you're drinking with your lunch or right. are you replacing it, putting it in place of your lunch? Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, most meal replacements, uh, things like that, it's going to have, so instead of just being a protein shake where it's mainly just protein, um, then it's protein carbs and probably even a little bit of fat. Now this is like literally a meal. You might be getting a few hundred calories from this shake 
as opposed to, um, let's see, if you got 24, uh, yeah, maybe like 100 calories out of, uh, out of a protein shake. I was just doing math in my head. I'm not sure if that was right. But, um, but yeah, so, so making sure that you, you're not just throwing a thing at the wall. It's like, why am I doing this? And actually, th this is one thing when people talk about uh, protein shakes in general, they're like, hey, should I have this, uh, this one that has carbs in it? And that can be very beneficial uh, when, you're, um, when you're around a workout. So getting some protein and, and some carbs is great. But if you aren't measuring your protein and your carbs in the first place, you might just be adding more calories in and you might have already had enough carbs. So I like to do the things separately and go, give me a protein shake, give me some carbohydrates that I can put in this, and mm -hmm. now I can put in as much as I want. So, because uh, otherwise it's like, oh, I had two scoops, and now I just doubled my carbohydrates, I doubled my protein, I doubled my calories, um, but did I, did I really just want to add one or the other? Right, yeah. So, so yeah, now, even, oh, go ahead. Meal replacement, you know, instead of like a, whatever, a packaged meal replacement shake, mm -hmm. like smoothie is the way to go. Because again, like you can decide how much of everything you have in there. You can put in your protein powder. You can put in your spinach and carrots and cucumber, whatever. Like that's right. what I always, and then like half a banana and some frozen berries. And now you're in control of, um, like how many calories you're getting. You're mm -hmm. in control of the macros. And you're actually getting all the fiber that's going to make you feel full versus slamming a chocolate shake. And now like it was just a glass of water. Yeah. And now you're. Absolutely. Now when, when it comes to carbs, so we already went over like, so protein, we're looking at about 0.8 to like one gram per pound of body weight. So if you, if you set it at your body weight, um, it's going to be pretty, pretty darn close. Uh, what about carbs? Hmm. Again, like I use the hand measurements. Mm -hmm. um, I have to go back and look. This is why I have a book. <laughs> what did you do? Because I know you did the RP. Yep. Um, so for, for the most part, um, I would, especially if you're exercising regularly, I would say somewhere around one, one gram per pound of body weight is going to be pretty close. If you're doing lots of heavy lifting, then you might be more like may, maybe one and a half uh, and, and plus. Um, but for most people who are exercising regularly, uh, one is probably going to be pretty good. If you're a little bit more sedentary, maybe you're not really exercising, um, not really lifting weights, you might go a little bit less, but, um, I think that that's usually a pretty good place to start. So, you know, I might, you know, I'm like 190, 195. So my protein and carbs are going to be about at that range, especially if I'm uh, staying active. What and, go ahead. Use for your carbs. What's that? What do you like to use for your carbs if you're cutting? Um, I would say so. Uh, yeah, because I, I like I would always try and get the highest volume. So number one, you're gonna get your veggies. Although lots of times, if cutting, I might not even count veggies. Like so, if you're thinking like spinach and uh, broccoli and green beans and stuff like that. But um, beyond that, um, I love corn tortillas. And so uh, corn tortillas are only like 10 grams per tortilla, which uh, that goes pretty, pretty long, uh, like a pretty long way. Um, rice, it, like a quarter cup is about 10 grams. And so that, that works out pretty well. Um, oatmeal, I really like, and then, and then fruit. But uh, yeah, e even fruit, like actually berries. Um, so especially if I'm trying to be super uh, high volume, then, uh, then definitely berries. So your mm -hmm. blueberries, blackberries, uh, stuff like that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make the food go farther. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to keep those things, uh, well, like the more dense stuff around your workouts. Right. Yes. Yeah. So if, um, if, if I just had a heavy lifting day, then right after my workout, I might have a protein shake. I might, um, throw in some rice and actually I love throwing. Um, so we have caramel latte protein and we also have cinnamon roll protein and throwing that in rice 
it's it's like rice pudding. It's so good. The the caramel latte is almost like horchata. So now you throw it in with a little bit of rice. It gives it like uh, a thickness and <laughs> it's super good. <laughs> yeah, I think rice, well, rice, potatoes, pasta, that is always a shocker when you actually measure out <laughs> yeah. yeah, actual servings and actual grams. It's like, right. whoa, how much was I eating before? Oh, man. I mean, think about going to a Chinese restaurant. And, yeah. and you get all that rice and it's like, oh my crap. I just, and not only do you have the rice, it's, it's also saturated in fat because uh, they yeah. gum it up with a bunch of oils and it's like, man, I just ate 10 billion calories. <laughs> yeah. And but, like uh, I said, like being and measuring at least once in a while, just so that you can like recalibrate that, like those portion sizes are not, <laughs> are not real human portion sizes. Right. That just because the restaurants give you a massive pile of rice with everything else sprinkled on top yeah. does not mean that's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm going to turn on my lights again because I forgot. <laughs> so I, I have my uh, energy efficient lights. Um, but so, all right, we, we've got our protein, we've got our carbs. And, um, and really, when, when you're thinking about carbohydrates, if, uh, if you just default to vegetables um, and then uh, it, it gives you some cushion to add in those things that you love and even adding in, you know, some ice cream every now and then or uh, if you want to have some, uh, some candy or uh, a sweet or something like that. But it, it'll be nice to like number one, keep you full, but also to keep the carbohydrates low so that you can have your carbohydrates without going crazy with things like granola bars and stuff like that. Cause man, I actually, now, like, now that I think of it, I, 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 I haven't had a granola bar in quite a while, but it's gotta, it's gotta be somewhere between like 30 and 50 grams of carbs. And yeah, I don't know. I, I would, um, I would bet that for most people, you're, you're talking about having like a third of your carbohydrates in, in that one like granola bar. It's like, now I, I could have um, like so much more of, man, you, you could eat 10 billion blueberries <laughs> for that. <laughs> but um, all right, so we got our protein, we got our carbs. And so if, if you're thinking even somewhere in like the one to one, um, right there, especially if you're staying pretty active, lifting, lifting weights and, uh, doing resistance training and then our fat. And so now with our fat, all we're doing is we need to fill up the rest of our calories. And so, especially if you're using something like my fitness pal now, um, when you're changing the ratios, if you set those up so that your protein and, uh, carbs are hitting about that same, then you can just, uh, set up your fat for the rest of, of the calories. Yeah. And this one, again, probably even more so like, I mean, carbs are surprising when you see, uh, the portion sizes of dense carbs, like, like we said, like rice, pasta, fat is even more surprising. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. It, 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 so yeah. So if you think, so, um, fat is calorically dense. So what is it? Is it nine, nine calories per gram? Yeah. Where protein and carbs are four. All right, so it's all it's uh, it's over double, and so now when you're thinking about all these things that we love, so oil, so olive oil and coconut oil and um, whatever butter. else, yeah, butter, peanut. Avo avocado, peanut butter, nuts, um, you like, it's like oh my goodness, like <laughs> I can't I can't have any of these, <laughs> <laughs> or at least not in the in the amounts that I was eating. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, so now one of the biggest things, and we talked about this earlier, was that we want to try, if you're trying to cut weight or cut body fat, we want to try and keep as voluminous, is that, is that how you say it? Uh, food as possible. Voluminous, I don't know. Anyways, um, you want to keep the most volume as possible. And so our, our, um, our easiest way to do that is starting out with your, your protein and vegetables. And uh, like, man, actually, I, I put together something one time 
with with spinach and I, I have like those bags of spinach that I get at Aldi and um, it, it was gonna take like five bags to equal you know it was it was something like very like an apple you know or something like that and so you're, you're taking even an apple which is not like a super dense um, uh, form of carbohydrates and um, it, it, like the spinach was so much less calorically, um, it was ridiculous. And you're getting lots of vitamins and minerals and you get more volume in your stomach. So, yeah. so using the vegetables as your go-to to, to, um, to, to fill up your belly so that you're, you're always feeling full. And the same, same thing with protein. Yeah. Yeah. I remember way back when I was doing zone, <laughs> my meals, every meal was, it was like three or four cups of lettuce yeah and like a handful of grapes yeah and most of the carbs were in the grapes <laughs> <laughs> right yeah i um i totally so when i was probably my leanest i was eating at least i think 12 cups of vegetables a day and now here's the funny thing so many people talk about plant-based and like this and that right and it's like i'll tell you what i eat like, so even though I eat a lot of protein, like, uh, so I eat a lot of meat products, I eat the crap out of vegetables and, oh. and, and so many people do not do that when, so it's, it's packaged food, it's, uh, wh whatever it is, but, uh, vegetables are like, you have to prepare them. So it gets, it gets difficult. But, uh, once, once you have that down, you go like, man, I would have, I would be at the firehouse and I would, have, I would eat multiple plates of food and people would tease me. They'd be like, Oh, what are you eating now? Twigs and berries. And I'm like, dude, you're hungry. You're on this diet. Right. And, and you're, you're eating soup and like for every meal. And I'm over here eating multiple plates of food and a whole chicken. <laughs> and you're, you're uh, making fun of the way I'm eating. Right. <laughs> and it's like, all right, hey, I get to eat. I get to eat a lot of stuff and get lean. Yeah, yeah, Which, and right. I mean, we get some goofy looks in the grocery store when you're loading up all of your food on the conveyor belt. Yeah, and it's like higher produce section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the other carts are like cases of pop and everything's in a box in a can. Yeah, I'm like. Oh, all this stuff is even in the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So actually, I um, I put together a um, a day of food of what what it would look like for me. All right, because I think that this is um, this is big in uh, when you're trying to eat well, knowing that you can eat a lot of volume um, when you are trying to to lose weight. And so this is set up for. Let me see. Um, for 2,200 calories, all right. I'm about I'm about 190, 195. All right. So if you can you can start relating to that. Um, and so for breakfast, I had three quarters cup of egg whites with two eggs, three cups of spinach, a apple, um, two tablespoons of peanut butter, and a half a cup of oatmeal. All right. Now, when you think of a, a breakfast, all right, that's a pretty freaking legit breakfast. That's it's a, it's a lot of food, and in fact, um, that won't fit on one plate. All right. So that that's a um, a pretty balanced breakfast. Now, it's it's actually a little bit more volume than I might uh, like. I might split that up into like two two meals. All right. But lots of times I will just eat something like that. Um, then. For lunch, I put in a like six ounces of chicken breast, um, three cups of romaine lettuce, which if you take like three cups, you've you've got a pretty pretty good sized salad, two tortillas, and then um, it was actually it was four tablespoons of dressing, all right, just because I wanted to actually add add it in pretty um, pretty ideally for what people are used to <laughs> all yeah. right yeah because when you're measuring out salad dressing oil-based salad dressing <laughs> and right like, two tablespoons like yeah come on 
<laughs> All right. So I had a big old, big old salad uh, with a pretty good amount of meat and some tortillas. All right. Then for dinner, eight ounces of uh, of ground beef. So I was pretending that I was making tacos, and I had um, two more tortillas, and then three cups of of lettuce. So what I lots of times do is I'll I'll make tacos. And I'll have a couple tacos, and then I'll make a big taco salad. So uh, j just so I get more vegetables, because otherwise you get like literally a like a pinch of vegetables on each taco. All right, so eight mm -hmm. ounces of meat, um, lettuce. Then I had, let's see, I think three quarters cup of um, of rice. I had a half a cup of refried beans. And so now, like, look look at this as, like, think of it, about this on your plate. So you've got a crap ton of meat. You've got a crap ton of, uh, of vegetables. Then I've got my rice and beans, just like if you went to the, to the restaurant. I've got a couple tortillas. And then um, I also had a protein shake. So after my workout, I had a, a protein shake. And then in the evening... I had a half a cup of cottage cheese, so low-fat cottage cheese, with blueberries on top. So I got three meals. I got my protein shake after my workout, and, and I get a dessert uh, in the evening. And just like we were talking about the other day, it's freaking gourmet, right? Yeah. So like my, my dessert, although, it, yeah, it wasn't ice cream or something like that, but it was something that was delicious, it was sweet, and it's getting me, me to my goals. As opposed to, um, I went and had ice cream, and I hate myself because I still haven't lost a weight, and, right? No. And uh, and now and and this hit within um, within plus or minus five of the macros that I needed for for that day. So super simple. A lot. That's a lot of food. You know, I yeah. I, I talk to people all the time that are like. You know, I had, uh, you know, I, I had a, a banana and yogurt for, for breakfast and I had a salad and then I had like a lean cuisine for dinner, right? Now listen to that versus what I just told you <laughs> and you go, which one do you want? And yeah. uh, it, 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 there's a, a total one difference. One of those losing weight. Right. <laughs> Yeah, one one of those is losing weight, and one of those is um, is still struggling. Now, um, here's the thing: when when it comes to cutting, we don't necessarily want to be cutting forever. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, talk about that, Eric, because I, I think that's um, a big thing for just healthy lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mentioned earlier that uh, like you're moving toward your like ideal lifestyle, right? The problem with diets is there's a mentality of like, I'm going to do this, get to where I want to be. And then I can go back to what I was doing. Right. And like, that's, that's the wrong way to be thinking about it. That's not helpful because if you go back to what you were doing, you'll go back to where you were. Right. So, uh, thinking of it more as like trial and error where you can, you can, go through this process of losing weight, of adopting these habits, and then deciding like, what do I like? What don't I like? You know, what things am I going to keep? What things uh, from the past do I want to bring back? Right. And really that's going to depend, that's going to decide how lean you stay, like where your maintenance is. Because if you're not willing to give up certain things, like you're probably going to gain a little bit back. Mm -hmm. But if you're hanging on to these, you might you know, hang on or uh, maintain those results longer. So as you're going through it, I, I think it's helpful to have that mentality as you go into it of like, I am, I'm collecting data. I'm learning through this about like what's going to work for me long-term and what isn't because like weighing and measuring your food every single day, every single meal that for most people that is not going to work long-term. Right. All right. So figuring those things out, um, and figuring out that like the um, cost benefit analysis for you of like how lean do I want to be and what does that require of me and where's the balance between those two right so that as you're coming off that cut you can say like okay 
I'm to a point where I'm happy. Um, like I'm happy with the way I look, the way I feel, and these are habits I can maintain. Right. Yeah. And, and actually I, I like that you brought that up about, about maintenance. You know, you're not cutting forever. And so being in a calorie deficit is not how you want to live your life. Um, it's an ends to a mean, a mean to an ends, <laughs> whichever way it is. And, um, and uh, once you, once you, you get there, now we want to go back to that, hey, I'm eating this much all the time. And so it shouldn't, it shouldn't be in that calorie deficit anymore. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it, you might hit that maintenance point, you know, like, I mean, that's a plateau, <laughs> right? Yeah. It was like, if you have a lot of weight to lose, you're going to be in a calorie deficit for a while and you're going to lose weight and then it's going to pause because yeah. now you're in a new body <laughs> yeah. that requires fewer calories, you know? So, and so now you adjust as you go. Yeah. So actually we just got a, uh, a question from Amanda and she said, what would you suggest for someone who doesn't really eat vegetables? I really struggle with finding different vegetables that I enjoy. And, uh, so to me, uh, so this, this is difficult. Now there's a few things that you can do. And so number one, there are like supplements where you're getting the, like a lot of the vitamins and nutrients, but this is, this is a band aid. And th yeah. like that might be good if you're like traveling and you really want to just get your, your vitamins and stuff like that. But, um, it, you know, number one, find, find one that you like, find like, just find that one for me. Um, I really love green beans and I could probably eat them every day. I could, um, I throw them in stir fries. I, uh, just eat them on the side, like throw some garlic in them, like whatever. Um, but find the one that you like and start eating it a little bit more often. Um, or maybe like just say, Hey, once a day, or if, if you even want to start like three days a week, I'm going to have a vegetable like, and I'm going to have the vegetable that I like. Um, but so remember that this is, um, this is like going to get you volume. And especially if you're trying to lose weight, you want to have as much volume as possible. So find a way to really start to like it. Do you get, you got anything, Eric? Uh, so a couple things. One is, uh, the language. <laughs> okay. Everyone says this as I don't like vegetables. Well, if you start from that point, then every vegetable that you encounter, you're starting from the point of, I probably don't like it. But if you say, I haven't found vegetables that I really love yet. There you now go. you're like, now you're on the search. <laughs> right yeah um, so cooking methods or like preparation methods is a big thing because let me tell you the first time i had okra was in our college cafeteria and you know i don't turn down stuff i just try it so i'm like okay throw it on there yeah it was so nasty it was like they scooped it and there was slime it was like predator uh, like, it, nasty. that's how it is <laughs> I have never, that is the only thing that I think I've ever like spit out of my mouth. Yeah. But I've had okra other times and not like deep fried okra, but cooked that it was amazing. Yeah. So it's possible that the things that you've tried maybe just weren't prepared really well. So yeah. exploring some new ways of preparing foods. Um, and I have a guide. If you want to message me, Amanda. I can send you a guide that breaks down how to prepare vegetables. Um, so like pick your vegetable, pick an oil to go with it, uh, pick your seasonings and then like your cooking method and you can mix and match. So like if you love Mexican food, if you love Thai food, you know, you can take any vegetable and add those seasonings to it and prepare it in that way where like you already know that you like these flavors. And so you put those flavors with it. For sure. Yep. Yeah, I mean, all because actually, most vegetables, I feel like they don't have a ton of flavor. Yeah, they're they're, they're pretty <laughs> neutral. So now it's finding the textures that you want, and then then you throw the flavors that you love on top of them. Yeah. So yeah, well, super awesome. Well, uh, yeah, thank you, Amanda. Um, and yeah, if you actually, Amanda, if you have any other questions, you can reach out to uh, either of us. But uh, all right, so so cutting. Let's let's break this all down. 
So number one, we're looking, uh, we're gonna redo the vocab and we're gonna turn it into uh, like body fat reduction. All right, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, hold on, we got something from uh, from Brooke soup smoothie. All right, soup smoothies. Oh man, we got all kinds of stuff going on. Oh yeah, for like adding vegetables. Yeah, there you go. That is another great. Thank you, Brooke. Yeah, so adding them into uh, smoothies and um, and soups and stuff like that. Another way uh, to hide the vegetables. Um, Let's see, hold on. And Raul, I have a question. I'm trying to cut. I have a protein shake in the morning, protein and veggies for lunch and dinner, protein bar fit aid immediately after workout, and uh, protein shake when I get home from the workout and another shake before going to sleep. Is that too much protein? So um, now, number one, I like for me, I would say eat some food. <laughs> All right. So you're eating a lot of, of protein shakes, and I would, I would try and get it, like, so um, use the, the shake around a workout. That's great. I would probably, um, uh, and, and outside of that, usually I would use a shake for convenience, yeah, all right, uh, instead of, like, uh, instead of a lifestyle. So definitely try and start um, adding in meat because, again, um, and, well, all right, so add in some meat. <laughs> uh, I would probably have less of the protein shakes and then I would add it all up. So is it, is it too much protein? It, mm -hmm. uh, it depends how much are you getting? So when you add it all up, are you, are you hitting that, that body weight or not? And to, to be honest, um, going over on your protein is not necessarily going to be a bad thing. Um, it's now, how does it fit in with the rest of your calories for the day? Right. You got anything on that? Um, yeah. I mean, same thing. Like you said, protein shakes are for convenience. Protein is easy enough to get from real food. So default to real food when you can for the nutritional sake. And, you know, there are more vitamins and minerals. Um, and also, like we were saying before, to fill you up for the volume. Because yeah. when you're only drinking stuff, your stomach isn't full. And you'll start, you know, grabbing other stuff. Yeah. Actually, he, ju he just responded back that uh, the protein in lunch and dinner is usually like uh, either chicken, fish, and stuff like that. So he is, so he is eating. But yeah, now, now it's just um, adding it up. So uh, Raul, I can even help you out. We can throw it into a calculator and start looking at how much are you getting and is that um, enough? Is that enough? Is it, is it more than you need? And then we can even go, especially if you're cutting, what are the other calories that I'm taking in? And uh, mm -hmm. now, now we can just get very specific, and especially I, I know Raul. And uh, so now I know that he's already eating pretty clean. Uh, now we go, all right, let's, let's get a little bit more uh, in depth. But yeah. uh, all right, so we're going to break this down. So uh, eating for body, like to, to lose body fat. And so we want to, if, if, so number one, we can start changing our habits, right? Yeah. Then mm -hmm. if, if that's still not working, then we can start. Um, then we can start measuring. So find, finding your uh, base metabolic base metabolic rate, or let's just say your base calories. How much am I burning per day? And then hitting our macros. And so remember about one uh, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. You can probably set your your carbs at about the same, and then adding in the fat where where it fits into your calories. Um, when you are making your meals. What we want to do is make sure that we're trying to eat as voluminous food. I'm using the word again. I don't know if that's how you say it. Uh, the, the most volume food that you can. So start out with your meat and vegetables uh, wherever you can. And then you can add the other things in around it. All right. And once you're doing that very consistently and you're hitting your numbers, if the scale, if the scale is not changing or your body uh, composition is not changing, then we're going to start cutting 250 calories, and when, when you're when you're cutting that out, um, I would uh, I would cut out the protein or fat first. All right. Now don't go too low on fat. So maybe take a little bit of the carbohydrates out. And what that would be is uh, so what's 250 divided by four? 60. 
All right. So, so you're going to like, so it's, let's say that we cut out like 60 grams of carbs and because uh, now you can keep your, your protein um, uh, pretty, actually you, you can bring it down because you, you can bring everything down, but mm -hmm. we, we don't want get, to get too low on the protein. So just keep that protein uh, pretty close. And, um, but now cutting 250. And if you're doing that very consistently for two weeks and it's still not working, then you might want to go again. All right. So um, that's the way that you would uh, start cutting uh, for body fat. All right. Let's see. I think Raul's got. Okay. What does he got? Cool. Um, yeah. Eric, do you got anything else when it comes to that? Well, I know everyone's wondering, and we kind of mentioned it at the beginning, like, but how much cardio should I be doing? <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> and I will say, this is Stan Efferding, who's a bodybuilder. Mm. Uh, he he uh, prescribes to all of his clients a 10-minute walk after your meal. Yeah. Hormonally, like chemically, it is the same as taking um like blood sugar drugs for diabetes like taking metformin yeah a 10 minute walk and metformin have the same uh same response on your blood sugar so if you take a 10 minute walk after each meal there's the cardio that you need <laughs> yeah there you go yeah start start with the source and the source is the food that's going in because yeah. you don't gain body fat from not exercising, it it's uh, a surplus of uh, calories. So there you go, guys. If you guys need any help, you guys can definitely reach out to us. Um, Eric, where can they find you? Uh, Eric McGathy on Instagram and Facebook, or uh, check out Fit to Thrive Nutrition. There you go. And I'm Zach McGathy, uh, and you can reach out to anything at CrossFit Chicago Heights. All right. You guys, we'll see you next week. And Eric, um, hopefully we'll see that baby soon. Yep, it's coming. All right. <laughs> see ya. Bye.